me show you guys. We'll get down here. See this fan impeller here? Yeah, you can't see it very well. Let me let me move it into some better light. Okay, see that fan impeller there and the holes that are in it? I already mentioned this on another video. I don't know which way which one's gonna come up, but uh, this is an actual four cycle with an oil sump. Um, the crush ring that's on there to hold that in place is something that uh, I just had. A, I've got a visitor and he's holding plates. Sounds like looks like I might have somebody who watches my videos here. You okay with being on video? Don't matter to you. That is a stack of plates. I, and my birth year. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? Okay. Fill fill me in. David Fisher. David Fisher. Yep. Awesome. What you got there? Zip ties. Zip ties. Zip ties by the millions, it looks like. How did you come about being out here? I run the area. Well, no kidding. And you watch my videos. Yeah. And you figured out who I was. Yeah. That's a dedicated subscriber. That's awesome. You just happened to come in when I was shooting a video. Yeah. Okay, guys. I'm going to cut this off and chat with him for a few minutes. I know he's busy and he's got his truck sitting out there. So I'll catch you guys in a little bit. Okay, gang. Well, how awesome was that? Uh, Dave Fisher works for Best Way, uh, local um, refuse, like dumpsters and stuff like that. And he has come across just a, a plethora of plates. I've got California. I've got a 150 year anniversary, statehood anniversary plate, 1816 to 1966, which has my birthday. 150th year, Indiana, 1966, my first Indiana plate. Ball State University, some other Indiana plates, a church bus plate, a recovery plate, which would be a tow truck, disabled American veteran plate from 94, Indiana Guard Reserve from 1994, Total Force of the Nation Shield, Indiana, 1994, a Florida plate. So, he, and, and he, from California to Florida, in '96, a Wisconsin plate, Illinois plate, Wyoming plate, and Indiana Indian Caverns, scenic route, Pennsylvania's largest and world's most interesting. Indiana Caverns on scenic route 45, Spruce Creek, PA. At just and what a fantastic man he's a small frame guy and he saw my videos on the small frames and decided that uh, he's gonna start collecting stuff and then he realized that he recognized the surroundings he recognized the houses he recognized the barn he saw me take off on Big Bill and go out and hit the road just outside of my neighborhood knew exactly what road that was and I guess he'd been planning for some time to come in and say howdy to Zippo so and that's always a, a, a really neat experience for me that uh, locals uh, watch my videos and are thoughtful enough to stop off bearing gifts and then he also gave me this and this is the really nice rubber insulated wire and he said he got a, a, a big spool of it, you know, the big wood spools. But he painstakingly, there's two sections here, painstakingly went through, untangled all of it. Working for Best Way, uh, he's allowed to grab and keep uh, whatever comes his way. And then another thing that he grabbed was cable ties. And then I, I, I got cable ties for days weeks months there's a thousand pieces in this box cable ties out the rear so he really hooked me up and it was just fantastic meeting him super nice guy we have talked before on Facebook um, but uh, that just kind of blows me it blows me away uh, the thoughtfulness uh, of people and everything that they do and so now I've got instead of that stack of about 50 plates now I have about 60 plates that I've got to get put up
I'm getting so far behind in my own things. But anyway, um, I've even I totally forgot where we were and what was going on in the video. So let's just go ahead and end this one. We'll end this one on a good note. That made Zippo's day. Dave, thank you very very much for stopping by. Thank you for. Hey gang, a little bit of a quick update before uh, we get to the craftsmen sitting out there. Uh, these were the, these are the belts that are called for as a five eighths by ninety seven. Um, we're actually going to be going with a half by 95 and a half uh, as per mic and we'll see what happens with that so I do have those two belts and I can I can return those and get my 20 bucks back but I got a pile of belts sitting here that was given to me um, by the same gent who gave me that spool of wire and gave me all of the wire ties and all the play that stack of plates uh, that had the Florida and the California uh, David Fisher so he was kind enough he gave me those and he also gave me he had a whole five gallon bucket full of eye bolts washers and nuts that were just pitched by a business so I grabbed me 20 of those shouldn't be in the need for those anytime soon and what else did he do well went to an auto parts store to pull a dumpster and this was in the dumpster. It is a 750 watt, 1500 peak power inverter. And I've already tested it out. It runs my drill, my angle grinders, and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, so that was a really awesome gift. Um, but, you know, it didn't cost him anything. And I get that, and I understand it. And I definitely appreciate his generosity in that regard. And I'm sure he's uh, got a couple for himself as well. Um, but just the generosity uh, was awesome but he did come by he came by to pick up a couple things off of me so uh, and we had a good visit I just didn't break the camera out but as you saw in the two previous clips there um, David's a really really nice fella real nice guy super nice and uh, it's it's always great to ha make new friends and have new uh, new people stop by the shop. I've uh, been doing a bunch of cleanup, getting a bunch of scrap ready for Michael. No, not the CL200. No, not the little grape ape bike. Um, but I think I just mentioned we're going to be going with a 95 and a half by one half inch belt, drive belt for the mower deck on this and see if that doesn't straighten things out. Uh, Michael said he's done a number of these that way and it cures the problem and that this issue is a common issue but we're still going to take a look at the idler pulleys and whatnot so now that i've given props to david let's go ahead and lift this thing up on its tail and take a look at all the pulleys and everything cut the old belt out and make sure that we are ready to go when the new belt arrives which it is supposed to arrive today so hang on we got the belt. So we're going to get the craftsman up in the air. I'm going to cut the old belt off. We're going to take a look at all the idler pulleys and the condition of the deck spindles. Make sure every, all that's okay. Throw this new belt on. Put it through its paces. So give me a second to get that thing up in the air and we'll take a look. Alright gang. We're looking at the deck <clears throat> from the left side as you're sitting on it. And I see quite a bit of, uh, oh, my hand's in the way. I see quite a bit of, you know, just, just really, really dry right here. And this is a pivot point. So that may be a point of contention where it's not pivoting and flexing the way that it should. Um, all the belt guides are on the way that they're supposed to be. The belt is installed the way that it's supposed to be, so on and so forth. But we're going to pan around here and take a look at where the belt ends up riding on these. It always does this. It comes up and it flips up. It even pushes the guides out that I made. So with the smaller belt that's an inch and a half shorter and a half inch, uh, Mike says that they tend to stay in the bed of the pulleys a lot better, which makes perfect sense because with the 5 8 belt on here, if we look up over, are we, oh, let's pan a little bit. When we get 
well I'll just show you right here when we get a 5 8 belt in there that belt actually rides proud in the pulley um, which doesn't give it all of the engagement in my opinion all the engagement that it needs it needs to ride a little shallower in the uh, pulley fully fully engaged not proud like it uh, like the last two belts have been so we're gonna cut this one off throw the new one on take it out put it through its paces for oh I don't know I may go ahead and just mow half an acre here and see how it does because I know his lot is smaller than that um, and then we'll pull it back up check the belt again and see what kind of shape we're in as far as um, any belt wear or the belt rolling or anything like that but as soon as I cut this belt off we're gonna inspect the pulleys make sure we don't have any floppy pulleys and also check the spindles for any play so hang on anybody want to watch what happens when you cut a belt <laughs> Especially one that's under a lot of spring tension. We're going to use our channel lock cable cutters. Watch those fingers. In three, two, one, spring! Well, that was uneventful. I like that. Uh, we've got it caught up on the clutch, electric clutch, so that's why it didn't spring too much. That's also why I decided I was going to come off of the side that I did. But let's go ahead and pull the belt. We'll get her pulled out of all the pulleys on the deck real quick. Or maybe not super quick, because this one's not super quick. That's good enough for me for right now. We want to check the condition of the pulleys. And the condition of the deck spindles. And I just checked the two on that far side. I don't know how well you were able to see that, but they're just, they're, they're beautiful. They're real, real nice. Same here. Zero play. And you even see, you, got, you can't even see it. Well, you have to be able to see it because this is a video, right? Let's try it again. Okay. This pulley right here is in beautiful shape it, it no issues whatsoever on that pulley and this one's going to be real hard for you to see anyway but I'm just wobbling around grabbing the blade seeing if there's any play at all and there is none so we are good on all of that um, and we're going to now put the new belt on sit tight okay not much to see here except the new belt is on we are ready to lay this thing back down on its four wheels and take it for a mow and see how it does. So it'll be just a second for you guys, but for me, I'll be back in about 30 minutes. That's a common picture in this shop. Okay, let's go out here. And as you guys may or may not be able to see, We've got over half an acre mode. Zero issues. None whatsoever. Let's take a peek at the belt if we're going to get some good light. And I see no abnormal wear on that belt whatsoever. It is doing exactly what it is supposed to do. So, Mike, buddy, you saved me. You saved me with that tip. A belt that is not designed for this tractor works like a charm. Half inch by 95 and a half instead of 5 eighths by 3 or 5 eighths by 97. So the primary mower belt, the 174883, no bueno. So I've got a mental note and a physical note written down about these style of tractors and what belt to use thanks to Mike all right guys that wraps this one up friendly neighborhood Zippo I do believe we finally have the DYT 4000 ready to go back 
and stay back with Don. We'll see you guys on the next one.